Okay, here's one from another form. Uh, Derek Carver. I would like to ask him about the infamous Carver Challenge, and if you could do it over again, what would you do different? Um, that went off so well and without a hitch, I wouldn't, I couldn't think of a thing that I would do differently. What I had done is I had practiced a little bit before I went there. Actually, I practiced a lot to make sure that <clears throat> when I walked into the stereophile magazine room, uh, I'd be able to pull it off with relative ease. So I, I had done, the, I'd done the transfer function characteristic on several amplifiers, before, including a couple of tube amps. Not that big, but small. That was his Conrad Johnson that they actually chose. So I wouldn't do anything different. Back in the heyday of monster speakers and experimenting with super imaging, if you will, do you think that you had the better implementation of electronics-based sonic holography technology? Or do you feel that Polk has a better implementation with their speakers based on the SDA technology? Uh, it, it turns out that SDA technology was licensed by Polk from me to implement in their loudspeakers. Uh, and they, they, they paid me, a, they, they gave me a royalty for, impl for doing it. It was, uh, the, the SDA technology was, you know, I never paid that much attention to how well it was implemented, but there's no, conceptually, there's no conceptual reason that it would not have been implemented as well as me and in my sign call that I'm doing it electronically. It, the results could have, should have been the same. I don't know if it actually was implemented that way. Un unquestionably, there would be a difference between the two. What gave you the thought of sonic holography? How did you come up with the idea? I don't remember. Let me think a minute. Um, Well, I've always been an imaging freak. I've loved to be able to close my eyes and have images appear in space and sort of suspend my disbelief and be transported to a, to a nice, beautiful, live symphony recording. I mean, or facsimile of it anyway. And um, so one day I was just thinking about how to make that happen. What was, the, what was wrong with two-channel stereo? And it was that it collapsed this, this three-dimensional sound field into a flat curtain of sound strung between two speakers. And I also understood that, that the way to get around that is to cancel uh, some of the unwanted sound arrivals. And so just to back up a little bit, in real life when we hear a single sound, like I snap my fingers, or pop my teeth. For each sonic event, we hear two arrivals, one per, one, one per ear, it's two arrivals. But when we play it in stereo, we hear four, two per speaker per ear. So, uh, so it doesn't work, so that collapses the sound stage. And so I designed a sonic hologram to cancel the two unwanted ones. I tried it out, uh, in fact, I tried it not electronically at first, but by having these little Radio Shack speakers, I saw them here someplace. And I put two of them at arm's length and two more, inverted the, inverted the signal to make a cancellation signal, moved it back and forth to develop the required interaural time delay, which is about 120 microseconds. And lo and behold, it worked. Canceled those two arrivals and it sounded so much more realistic, so much nicer, so much more believable than the flat, more or less flat curtain of sounds trying between two speakers. Without sonic holography, it's very difficult to get a three-dimensional three image. It can be done, but boy, it's, it's hard to do. Uh, so, next question. When you set up the minimum sevens, were they the opposite channel out of phase, or were they the same channel out of phase? Opposite channel out of phase. And I had a level control. I could control the volume of each one, so I could adjust it. And there's more to it than that. There's a lot more to it. That was just a proof. That was that's what I would call a proof of concept that it could be done. And then it, and that took that took an afternoon to put it into production, which was a much more serious problem, and get it to sound really, really sound right. It took about a year of work. Did any of Nikola Tesla Nikola Teslas work with 
coils have any influence on your development of your magnetic field damps? And if so, how? Thanks. No. <laughs> <laughs> See, Frankie could ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>